Grab a cocktail with us and welcome to the hot mess that is my life as a single makeup artist living in a college town in Florida. This is Kara's Lipstick Diary. Welcome back, you guys, to another fabulous episode. Have you hit that subscribe button yet? You know, that little button down there that says subscribe or follow or like or whatever. You're going to need to click on it. And make sure you follow us on social media, too, because you know you're going to get all the behind the scenes information and fun stuff that's going on. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, make sure you do it and hit that subscribe button. We need you to subscribe. Hit the button. All right, you guys, we are back. And today I am very excited. I have a guest who I have known since before I turned 25 because she was totally at my surprise 25th birthday and I'm 40 now. So we've known each other a long time and we're going to discuss ethical non-monogamy, polyamorism today. And so for that episode, I figured a bottle of penis wine might be the best thing to drink. I mean, do you guys see this bottle? It's kind of epic. It is a giant penis and it is rosé and the brand is called Just the Tipsy. I mean, could that be more perfect? I literally had a friend find this for me on Instagram and be like, girl, you have got to have this on your show. So I ordered a bottle. I have no idea if it tastes good or not, but it's an epic bottle. So like, who cares if it tastes good? But we're going to test it out and find out if it tastes good on this episode. So my guest, Norma, is here with us today. Norma, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this issue that is becoming more and more sort of prevalent. Oh, this bubbles, by the way, y'all. This is bubbly rosé. It's kind of exciting. There you go. Have some bubbly penis wine. Thank you. I'm, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm excited. Well, and the thing is, is polyamory and polyamorism and non- you know, monogamy is sort of becoming a more and more talked about thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, back in the day, you basically just thought of like sister wives is like what that was. And mm -hmm. really that's not what ethical non-monogamy is. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes I see in monogamous relationships, there's not so much monogamy happening and it's not so mm -hmm. ethical. So I thought it'd be great to like have that conversation, have that discussion. I know we've mentioned on here that I know most likely I'm not gonna fit into a standard, normal, socially acceptable, expected monogamous relationship because I've never had to be, so why would I? So I thought it'd be great to actually have a conversation about this and there can be non-ethical polyamory as well sure um you know and so it's discussing sort of what all of that means so when i first knew you mm -hmm. you were married mm -hmm. in a monogamous relationship mm -hmm. correct correct how did life evolve for you how did you get to a point where you were like eh, this ain't what i need it's a very good question and first yeah I'm gonna have a cheers cheers, cheers. <laughs> Sip wine. Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, it's actually surprisingly good. Oh, the penis wine is good, you guys. I was worried that it was going to be sweet. Yes, and, and it's kind of dry. It's actually, perfect. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. This is really good penis wine, you guys. You should order penis wine. It's really good. All right, so back to the question: How sure. did you go from a married monogamous mm -hmm. life to realizing right. that wasn't the right fit for you? Well, um, in a way that many people come to polyamory, I accidentally fell in love with someone else while I was married. And um, being a, an ethical person, yeah. I did not follow that road. However, it still had repercussions for my marriage. Yeah. And um, that relationship ended you know, as it needed to for us to focus on our marriage. But it was kind of too late by then. Yeah. And we worked, we went to therapy, we tried to see what we could do. Um, but really, I didn't want to be in a situation again where my feelings were not okay. Right. I didn't want to be in a relationship where I was restricted from loving other people. Right. So after I was divorced, and I did try to have another monogamous relationship for a little while, and then it happened again. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, as that relationship was sort of coming to an end, I fell in love with another person, and we tried to kind of see... Can we be open about it? Can we have honest communication? Can we, you know, can I have more than one partner? Well, um, I think and, in our society, yeah. we put so much pressure on that one person. Mm, your absolutely. significant other is supposed to provide you with all of your sexual mm -hmm. needs, all of your emotional needs, mm -hmm. all of your support needs, all mm -hmm. of your everything. They're supposed to be your best mm -hmm. friend, your lover, mm -hmm. everything, all in one person. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. That is a fuck ton of pressure. Right. And like... One person typically can't be right. all of those things. Right. One person can be a lot of those things for yes. some people. And, and I don't want to uh, be down on monogamy. No, I no. think it works for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, 
polyamory or non-monogamy or however you phrase it isn't for everyone. It is more work. Yeah. It is more um, difficult and challenging in some cases, but that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. Well, I mean, I think in any relationship you're in, mm -hmm. open and honest communication, mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. Making sure you are not violating your partner's boundaries, mm -hmm. their needs, mm -hmm. their desires, mm -hmm. majorly important. Um, and I think that doesn't matter if you're monogamous or right. non-monogamous. Absolutely. I think when you are non-monogamous, it pushes those things to the forefront more. It makes it so that you are much, you have to communicate because you can't be with someone that makes your partner uncomfortable. You can't, you know, be, you can't be pushing their boundaries. Right. And risking that relationship. Right. Um, and you have to be open and honest about it. And so many people in monogamous relationships, they just pushing that shit under the rug. We right. just pretend in this isn't happening. Right. When the reality is oftentimes right. it's still happening. Most monogamous couples deal with um, unfaithfulness or infidelity or whatever you call it. Uh, I think it's more, something like 75% yeah. of monogamous couples experience that. And in a lot of cases, there's so much pressure to be monogamous that that one or two incidents or whatever happens, it breaks up the yes. relationship because they don't know how to deal with it. Um, but I think most humans kind of have a natural tendency to have different kinds of relationships. Correct. And ethical non-monogamy or polyamory, whatever you, however you want to define it, um, it basically loosens those rules, yeah. right? So, and there's lots of different ways to be polyamorous. You can have an open marriage or you just kind of casually seek other partners and it doesn't involve emotions, but I mean, everything involves emotions. Everything emotion, involves emotions, <laughs> eventually. I mean, that's um, a lovely theory, but we're human. Well, we can we can talk about that yeah. in a second. All the way to the philosophy that I approach relationships with, which is relationship anarchy, which is basically that you let every relationship you're in develop how it naturally would, right? Without too much consideration for your other relationships. Not saying that you're not interdependent. Of course, right. you consider your other partners and what their needs and feelings are. And also just because love is infinite doesn't mean time and energy are infinite. Correct. So being polyamorous doesn't necessarily mean that you should go out and seek, you know, as many partners as possible. I want 20 different partners. <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> but, you know, you have to pay attention to your own band. Right. Exactly. So well, and I know for instance, like I knew someone who decided that they needed to be polyamorous and then forced their partner into it yeah. because they knew that their partner had abandonment issues mm -hmm. and would not leave, even though the partner was not at all comfortable with this to the point that mm -hmm. this person was literally giving their partner money and saying, you're going to go get a hotel and take a girl there. Um, like that's, that's not, ethical. not ethical. That is that is non-consensual. That mm. is extremely Coercive. inappropriate. Mm. Uh, and then trying to force everyone around them to go into this lifestyle as well. Not mm. everyone is going to be comfortable with this, no. nor are they going to want to. No. Um, and you can't force your partner to have sex mm. with other people if that's not what they want. You can't force your friends to have sexual encounters that they are not wanting to be part of. Yeah. That is a huge violation of ethical everything, y'all. I mean, I would consider that rape. <laughs> um, well, it was, but we won't even go into that. Whole nother story. But I think that that's, you know, it's it can be episode. very um, off-putting sometimes because sometimes you'll see people who are in polyamorous relationships mm -hmm. who do shit like that, mm -hmm. who are forcing it on other people, mm -hmm. who are saying, you know, basically fuck everyone else. I'm going to destroy relationships left and right. Um, and that's not right. what ethical monogamy or non-monogamy ethical polyamorism is. You're not out there to control other people and to tell other people how they need to live their sexual lives at all. Sure. There um, are unethical people in, in all sorts of right. systems, right? I mean, in business and, and friendship, you can have ethical doings and dealings yeah. and also there are people who aren't that way so i mean it, for someone who is polyamorous that does yeah you're absolutely yeah. right you don't go into it thinking that you're going to convert everyone you know right. i'm gonna convert you all to fuck around okay a lot of, a lot, i mean there is a there there are people who are polyamorous or relationship anarchists or people who are in this um, counterculture, so yeah. to speak, for lack of a better term, um, that 
do think monogamy is the old way and not the right way and don't, you know, they don't, they do want to kind of evangelize about polyamory. Right. Um, but that isn't necessarily ethical right. either. I mean, I, I, you know, as someone who really pushes societal expectations and, and being polyamorous and being uh, this approach to my romantic life and really my, my life in general. Yeah. I also have chosen family that are not blood relatives of Correct. mine. Correct. Oh, know. wait, same here. Wait, yeah. hold on. Huh? It's, and, that, <laughs> and relationship anarchy kind of goes into that. Like it yeah. kind of, it affects all aspects of your life, not just your romantic life. Um, but, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's all good. But that's, I mean, I think the thing is, yeah. is, Society has for years said how we have to live our lives. Right. But that doesn't fit for all of us. Right. So finding the right fit. Right. Um, I have for years, I mean, I'm 40 and I've never found. You're only 40? Yeah, I know. Right. How's I'm that? 44. Right. Well, I mean, I feel like we're the same age though. You were at my 25th birthday party. Like, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> I love, we had dinner recently and we had to try to remember what restaurant it was because it doesn't exist anymore. Um, mm. Macaroni Grill. Oh. In the mall, it was yeah. a total. It was great. Uh, I but miss any, that place. <laughs> but anyway, so I know for me, I've so seldom had to be monogamous. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how one mm -hmm. fully is monogamous. I want mm -hmm. a serious relationship. I mm -hmm. want my person, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure like monogamy would fit my life because I've been. I'm 40. I've never had to live that way. So for yeah. me, it's always been this sort of question: If I find that person, am I going to want to be monogamous? People keep telling me that I'm going to. There's nothing. But people wrong with also being tell open. me all the time I'm going to yeah. one day decide I want babies, and that still hasn't happened. So I think I, I think I know who I am. There's nothing wrong with being open to the possibility, right? You can you can date, right? I right. mean, I I date. I I definitely know who I am. Yeah. I know. I mean, I also am in a very serious, committed relationship yeah. for the last ten years with yeah. one person. Um, but in addition to that relationship, we both have other serious relationships right. sometimes. Um, we have friends with benefits, yeah. whatever that means. We have crushes. We have, well, you and know, I think it's human, it's human nature yeah. to see other people and have crushes, have sure. attraction. Absolutely. You can't, the minute you start seeing someone monogamously turn suddenly off. turn that yeah. off, you're still going to have those attractions. Right. It's human right. nature. Right. It's just, how are you going to react to those right. feelings. How is your right. partner going to react right. to those feelings and all of right. that? Like I'm talking to a guy now, we both know that we are seeing other people. We have mm -hmm. an open dialogue about this. That's wonderful. Um, we are still like, it's the first time that I'm like, oh wait, we have an open dialogue about this. And we've been talking for three months and seeing each other. Mm -hmm. And we're both okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, kind of crazy now um, do you have feelings of exclusivity do you like want to um do i want to be it, fully exclusive no okay um would i like more time with this person mm. yes sure um but we're also still in that early phase yeah. um of determining who we are to each other mm -hmm. um but do i want to exclusively see him no, no i like dick <laughs> I don't think I just want to be with one dick for the rest of my life. I mean, and this guy's good. Yeah. This guy's really good. Like, I agree this with is you. some dick that, like, he actually really likes it because I've actually given him shout outs on our social media. Oh my God. Um, he might be the best lay <laughs> of my life. So, like, oh, I, yeah, like, the guy's freaking amazing. Uh, but again, like, we discuss, like, I know he's mm -hmm. seeing another woman also. He knows mm -hmm. that I've been seeing other women or other men. I'm mm -hmm. um, sorry. Or I, women, I, either I way. could be seeing women. I, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but, like, I'm seeing other dudes I and, am. like, he knows all of that. Like, he's open with all of it. Um, you know, and that's one of those things that, like, when I found someone that I could, in comparison to Cocaine Cowboy, who freaked the fuck out when he found out I'd even been with other people, like, it's, yeah. you know, that's a very refreshing thing to me, to be with yeah, someone who's like, absolutely. wait, yeah, you have sex with other people? Cool. Like, cool. does it work for you? Cool. Right. Like, Honesty. I'm still your favorite person you have sex with? Great. Communication. Like, yeah. it's open mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. um, and expectations. And if the feelings evolve, we can have that conversation sure. um, of what it is we need. And I sure. appreciate that. I very much sure. appreciate that. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, this is one of those conversations that hasn't been talked about. Right. It has not been something right. we put on the table and discuss. I think a lot of, so I think one of the um, heteronormative, you know, monogamy culture things that, that 
we think about a lot is jealousy yeah. and people have this almost innate, but I don't know if it is innate, uh, tendency to be jealous and possessive of our romantic partners. And being polyamorous or non-monogamous does not make that go away when you really want to have multiple rela multiple relationships and multiple partners and you you do still feel jealous sometimes yeah. i mean most people not yeah. not everyone actually my my nesting partner is the term we use um oh, i enjoy who, that you're nesting the the person that i live with and have been with for 10 years he rarely feels jealous but he's not the norm not the norm yeah um most people who come from this monogamy culture um do still have feelings of jealousy and i certainly have um in regards to him and you know other relationships yeah. that i have that i've had the question is how you deal with it those feelings come up what is it that's causing them what's, what's that the root trigger cause? yeah um what's the insecurity uh what is your fear because that's because that's what you need to work on. Not necessarily that that person needs to stop seeing that other right. person. Where is um, that root cause coming from? Yeah, because your feelings are your own. Yeah, um, Your partner is, I mean, we're interdependent. I'm not saying that people should be inconsiderate right. of, of your feelings. But when, when it comes down to it, jealousy usually is based on your own right. insecurity. Well, and I mean, I think a lot of women, oftentimes you start worrying, is she prettier than me? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, the comparison. does she have yeah. better tits than mm -hmm. me or better ass? Is her pussy tighter? Is she smarter tighter? than me? Right. Is she smarter than me? Is she this? Is she that? Yeah. Those are the things that start going through your mind. Sure. Uh, and it's that, that confidence yeah. in that really isn't the bottom line of everything. I have There's a trick much, for that. Yeah. If you want Tell to Tell me. Yeah. I want to know your trick. So, uh, you know, jealousy does kind of have that yeah. that head you know um my my nesting partner was in a very serious relationship for a couple of years a few years ago and this woman is amazing right. and i love her as a friend and she's you know smart and pretty and everything yeah. you know they, that i would be jealous of um and i did struggle with some feelings of jealousy in our relationship as did she um but the thing that like helps me to put things in perspective is trying to put myself in my partner's shoes and thinking, okay, I also have had multiple relationships. Does my being interested or in love or infatuated with this person, this other person, does that take away anything from my feelings for my other partner, from Correct. this person? And the truth is it doesn't. Right. Because every relationship is its own little bubble. Correct. It's a microcosm and, and it doesn't. If anything, my exciting new feelings for this new relationship, they add to my other relationship. Well, and I think that's because something- Because I feel more confident. Yes. I feel wanted. Um, I think that's something we sometimes forget mm -hmm. is those other things sometimes can add to the depth of the relationship or make you realize that the relationship you're in is not what you've been looking for. Either sure. way- that's yeah. kind of a good thing. And being polyamorous doesn't mean that your relationships don't end. Right. Sure. I mean, that's that's an that that's that's a good point that you bring up, Kara, because like you're going along, you meet someone else, now you have two really great relationships. Right. Maybe you do struggle in one of them. Maybe maybe over time some well, things do kind of and, and maybe it raises some of those red sure. flags that maybe we so. ignored and maybe shoved so. under the rug and pretended weren't there sure. sometimes that can can sure. bring those to light which yeah. can also be good yeah. but it can also deepen that original yeah. relationship too like yeah. i know for me and this is what made me realize i most likely will not be able to have a polyamorous relationship mm. i always enjoyed I was a side chick for a long time. I thought mm. I wasn't worth being more than a side chick. Um, not true. And it was not an ethical polyamorous type of relationship. It was literally, I did not think I was worthy of being the main person or any of that. But one of the things I always in, oddly enjoyed was I liked hearing about them with other with their partners. Mm -hmm. I liked hearing those stories. I mm -hmm. liked knowing all of that. And it mm -hmm. got me off. Sure. And I was like, that made me go, wait a second. Maybe I'm supposed to be you know, non-monogamous because mm -hmm. I actually I enjoy like that. That's called and, compersion. Right. And I'd always mm -hmm. laughed because, you know, for a long time I had sexual trauma and it made it so it was very challenging for me to, to perform oral. Mm -hmm. it, I had had a lot of sexual trauma that made me very hung up on that. And I'd always been like, well, we'll just have someone come in and give you the blowjob for it. Like I'll sit there and watch. Like, I don't care. And guys yeah. would be like, wait, what? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no, if it's something that I don't want to do, mm -hmm. like I'll be in the room for it. Sure. Like, I don't sure. mind, but if sure. I don't want to do it, like, sure. you're going to need to get it someplace else. Sure. Um, and, and guys would be like, 
hold up wait seriously like I had a guy yeah. one time ask if I would pee on him and I was like that's not my jam like I have zero desire here, to let pee me on call you. my friend but like if I have a friend or you know someone who wants to pee on you like we can bring them in they can pee on you we're gonna need to shower you then and then we can have our own fun but like that wasn't my jam um and again he was like super shocked that I was like well we can have someone else do that like being non-monogamous really opens up the possibility right right <laughs> but like that was sort of like the clue to me of like maybe you're not supposed to be monogamous Kara. like you're way too okay and maybe you're not well and even as a child now mm -hmm. knowing sort of this situation better now as an adult um i feel slightly differently but as a child i remember you know the whole bill hillary Mon monica thing came oh, out oh yeah um that yeah. all came out when i was a kid and Polly i remember in the news right exactly really. now that was a little not i really. mean that was a little bit of a power play it we wasn't discussed how that was <laughs> ethically not appropriate <laughs> um, but at the same time i remember being like well i know why they're not getting divorced like that's not their relationship like and i remember right. like people being like wait sure. Kara, you are like an elementary schooler and you're having this discussion with us of like well, of course, Bill and Hillary aren't getting divorced. I mean, sure. they their relationship is built on other things besides just their sex. And if he needs to go get Probably a blowjob under the like yeah. desk, like right. whatever, who gives a shit? I like, imagine their relationship was based on policy. Policy, like right? it was like, all like their relationship. They might have been in love at first. Yeah, but, but like they have a business relate. Like, and oddly, as an <laughs> elementary schooler, mm -hmm. that made sense to me. And like, I remember thinking, like, I'm gonna have a relationship similar to that one day. And like everyone thought i was like crazy like mm -hmm. i remember adults being like okay sweetie like we, we might need to discuss this this is maybe not and i but i remember thinking like no that makes sense to me like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't understand why no one else is getting this like if right. that's their relationship what the fuck is the big deal that's how they live their lives right. they can still love each other absolutely like and so i that was kind of you know the first time i remember hearing mm -hmm. of these type of scandals but i remember thinking well that's okay. that's okay and i mean we even think about it in history how many powerful men did their wives know had side pieces? Oh, I mean, pretty much all of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. And it's just been accepted. Mm -hmm. But yet we didn't discuss that as And that's not an accepted actual for, the, for the wives to do right. that, though. Right. right. Well, and that's the thing. When the wives are just sitting at home being mm -hmm. like, okay. He can do whatever he wants. Whatever. Like, yeah. bitch, I'm going to be getting some, too. Like, yeah. you know, and I, I've had male friends who yeah. are like, well, I, you know, need to be in a relationship where I can be free, but I want her to be. No, 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 mm. no motherfucker. That's called, in polyamory circles, that's called a OPP or one penis policy. That's frowned on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. P.S. I had no idea what that song was about. Oh, I don't know if that's what that oh, song that is. Oh, that is. That is literally oh, really? what OPP the song is. Oh, is really? Um, like it, it has penis to do policy. Yeah, and it also okay. pussy. Like it switches back and forth throughout the song. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I had no idea. I, didn't, I sang I, that song as a child. I just I, learned that now. I only realized because they performed with the New Kids on the Block at their concert like <laughs> a couple summers ago, and like I decided to look it up, and I was like, oh <laughs> shit, I had no idea that that's what the song was about. Yeah, good to know. Um, I yeah. literally sang it as a kid, having no idea. I, I just but, I just but, learned now, <laughs> but like that to me is bothersome. Like you yeah, can't. I agree. Expect your partner I, to I sit agree. at home. But mm -hmm. I mean, again, if that works for your partner, so there is a such thing. Um, I mean, and people can be polyamorous in whatever way they want to be, right? So there are couples who one partner is polyamorous because uh, so I and I should kind of clarify some people think of polyamory or being polyamorous as an identity I'm polyamorous that's part of my sexual identity um, other people think of it more uh, of as a choice like a lifestyle like right. I choose to live my life polyamorously right no matter my like intrinsic uh, tendency right that's that's me. That's actually how I view it. But there are people who are like deeply, deeply polyamorous, like couldn't possibly think of living life a different way. And so it's kind of different, yeah. right? So they meet someone who is more, maybe they're like me, except maybe they're not as open to being polyamorous, right? I'm very flexible, but they might meet someone who's really monogamous, but is okay and not jealous. Right. They're okay with that person being polyamorous. So you have couples who one person is polyamorous and has multiple relationships and one person just isn't interested in doing yeah. that. And they just want to be monogamous with their one partner. And what do they do when that partner is with their other partners? 
They live their life. Yeah. They do other things. They have they a, have you know, friends. girls they night or they kids. watch a movie they, or you know, they watch that TV show their partner doesn't work. like. They do yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, and I think that that's... So you, that is the thing. That is, yeah. Well, I think, you know, every single person out there is going to have a different thing that works for them. Absolutely. And you have to be honest and truthful with yourself, with your partner, mm -hmm. and like know that this is what's going to work for us and right. this isn't going to work with, for us. Right. Um, and when you have that open, honest communication and mm -hmm. you can do that, that is amazing. Because like you said, mm -hmm. a lot of monogamous couples, they ain't monogamous. Like in reality, they just hiding yeah. it. And yeah. to me... I the think dishonesty. Most, I think most, most, most yeah. monogamous couples. I mean, I, 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 well, I shouldn't judge because I was that couple. Yeah. I was well, in that couple. And I'm I never, that single I actually girl. never judge somebody for cheating oh. because I like was this close myself. And well, and I've been a side yeah. chick. So like, sure. I, I've also watched so many of my friends and I've seen yeah. so many of their husbands. And I know because I'm the one that their husbands contact or the one that their husband is watching on all of my, you know, stories on social media, mm. or the mm. one that their husband has, you know, tried to get with me. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's not ethical. It's not ethical. It's not <laughs> cool. It also puts me in a really <laughs> fucked up situation. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, one of those things that, you know, you sit back and you watch all of that and you do, you know, sort of yeah. realize that to me, honestly, the openness, the honesty, the communication is far more important than the monogamy itself. I think a lot of monogamous couples i think they would do well to consider polyamory like not yeah. not saying that they should do it but it would be an interesting experiment for them maybe in therapy to actually we know i love explore, therapy explore those issues yeah. because it's it is human nature to 100%. have crushes be attracted to other people whatever it is you as a couple as a monogamous couple you can figure out what that means for you yeah. if it means that you like explore those crushes in your mind Rock with on. your actual partner who you're monogamous with cool, cool. <laughs> find what works for you but i think that that's why it was so important having this conversation norma thank you so much for coming on My the show pleasure. and talking about the subject that is like i say it's something that we're all sort of aware of but we don't mm -hmm. talk about five percent of the u.s population identifies as polyamorous just and so I, you know. I feel like it would actually be higher than that if Probably. we actually that's, that's are like the honest out, out of the closet yes percentage. well thank you again so much for coming on this is a subject Absolutely. that i think is important to talk about it's a subject not many people would be comfortable coming on talking about because we do sort of keep this all in the closet I now. Um, but you know me, I like putting all that <laughs> shit out there. So we talk about it. So well, I appreciate that about you. Uh, right. And I think this is why we're, we've been friends for so many years. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave us some feedback. We love to hear what you guys have to say about things. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye.